Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Dubai Airport, where it's about 5am local time, very, very early. You have already seen my first class trip report on Emirates first class on their A380, which I took from London here to Dubai. Today I've got the almost equally large privilege of trying their business class product and I can't wait. Let's go and fly to Manchester. Our journey begins being dropped off by hotel taxi at Dubai Airport's Terminal 3, which has a huge dedicated check-in area and security channel only for Emirates business and first-class customers. This allows you to skip the main terminal altogether. I later realized I shouldn't actually have been here. I was checked in without fuss and was soon airside and suddenly remembered that because I was on a cheap upgrade I purchased online check-in, I wasn't actually entitled to use business class check-in. You see, when cheaply upgrading from economy to business, you're not allowed to use the Emirates lounge, have chauffeur drive limousine service, the extra miles or extra baggage allowance that a proper business class fare would entitle you to. Oops. So no Emirates lounge for me today. My priority pass card got me into the Mahaba lounge instead, which was okay. It was nice and quiet and more so because noisy phone callers are able to use these little booths to make their calls. There's a hot buffet in this lounge too, and although I wasn't that hungry, I took a few items, which, as you can see, wasn't the most inspiring breakfast I've had on my travels. Personally, I wouldn't pay to enter this lounge, but as I've got unlimited Priority Pass subscription, I paid it a visit. If you stay in the terminal, however, there are lots of places to eat or grab a coffee, with some very familiar brands on offer. Terminal 3 is massive and I spent much of my time walking around the Beacon course and appreciating the sheer size of this airport. So I've walked all the way around this terminal and this is the first aircraft I've seen and you can just see its nose poking out from the glass there. It's so odd. I mean you walk all the way around the terminal and don't see a single aircraft yet I know these stands are full. There are so many flights departing. Very odd. I always find it a little bit weird when terminals are built so you can't actually see the aircraft that you're about to travel on. It just seems you know something incomplete about going onto a trip, going down the jet bridge and then getting on the aircraft having never seen it at all from outside. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just going for a lap of the terminal here. The B concourse is pretty big. Uh, I've got about 25 minutes before boarding starts, so I'm off. Uh, it's about a kilometer all the way around the terminal. I'm gonna do a nice big circle and uh, hopefully wake myself up a bit uh, for the flight ahead, because obviously I've got to record. Anyway, here we are at Dubai. It is about half past five in the morning. And as you can see, it's pretty busy here. Uh, the geographic location of the UAE means that it's very well predisposed for flights connecting both from America and Europe to places all over the world, Africa, uh, Australasia, the Far East, and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of flights departing here dead early in the morning. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. 
Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption, and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas. But Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. So here we go, about to board flight EK17, bound for Manchester in the UK. That's our beautiful Airbus A380 there. And I can't wait to board. It's about 6.30 a.m. here in uh, Dubai. It's only 2.30 in the morning back home in England, so I'm definitely going to be feeling the effects of this flight. Um, but anyway, I've got uh, seven and a half hours Perhaps a little bit more of business class to look forward to here with Emirates. Hello. Hello. Morning. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Good morning. Morning. This is Emirates business class, laid out in a one, two, one staggered configuration. Alternate rows have honeymoon seats paired conveniently for couples. Good morning. Window seats are staggered too, and be sure to check the seat map to pick one that's truly by the window, like I did. The upper deck of the A380 has side storage panels, which are super useful for all my kit, and the hygiene kits which were handed out on boarding. These contain spare masks, sanitizing gel, and spare gloves. At my seat were a blanket and headphones. Uh, I'll just get a juice if that's all right. Orange juice. Oh, is that apple juice? Yeah. I will have an apple one. Enjoy. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, this is genuinely a great seat. It feels very private. And you have an absolutely stonking view of the wing, or at least the back of it. And you'll be able to see the ground as well, which is not something you can do from most of the forward cabins. Anyway, on to uh, this, which is apparently an apple juice. Cheers. And of course, don't forget, half the fun for me is taking you along too. Very curious apple juice. Very weird. <laughs> I love watching other air traffic at airports, and Dubai sees a lot of cargo traffic handling two and a half million tons of cargo in 2019, with this 777 from Ahmedabad being a reminder of that.
you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a view of Dubai. It isn't. The airport is actually right next door to another, more conservative emirate, Sharjah. Time for a quick seat tour. Of course, this is a lie flat seat. What else did you expect? But the button functions are duplicated and expanded upon in the tablet. I wouldn't say this is the world's best business class seat, not by a long shot, but it is very good. The little mini bar is a nice touch and the storage area is a thoughtful addition, although I wish there was a little door in front of this. The table is formed of a very sturdy, shiny single panel, which was easy to operate. Oh, and importantly, there are air vents in business class above the seats. The tablet also controls the in-flight entertainment, which has as much choice as you could want. The screen is a good 23 inches wide and the noise cancelling headphones pretty good too. I covered the Wi-Fi in the last episode where I flew Emirates first class. Did you see that one yet? But I think a clever touch is publishing the menus in all classes for everyone to see. I was able to see what was on the menu in first class without even paying for Wi-Fi access. I'm sure that's just to encourage people to fly first class someday. So one of my favourite parts of the flight, checking out the menu and the wine list. It's actually not a surprise for me because Emirates publish the menu for each flight in advance on their website. Well, let's go and check these out. Yeah, I'll get a muffin as well, please. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So here we are, breakfast at 35,000 feet with Emirates in their business class. Always a little bit weird when you see individually wrapped things like this. I know the pandemic's on, but seeing single-use plastics back is never good. I have to say, breakfast wasn't great. I've seen American carriers do a much better job on this, even on domestic flights. This was the only choice with no hot option. Emirates bathrooms on the A380 are really rather lovely. One of the things I really like is this fold down seat to help you sit more comfortably when changing into pajamas before bed. Managing jet lag is important and I plan to get a few hours sleep and try out the bed. The crew will happily make up the bed for you and I have to say the pillows and bedding were really great.
Our flight today took just six hours and 50 minutes to cover the 3,514 miles between Dubai and Manchester. So a three hour nap was a good way to pass the time and try to reset my body clock. I woke up somewhere over Central Europe and lunch was soon to be served. Thank you. Lunch was much better than breakfast. This seared venison steak was delicious and the mango mifoy to finish was excellent. Now, you probably all want to see the bar on board the A380, but I've got to tell you, it was packed and impossible to film. So have this stock photo instead. Oops. Oh, uh, anyway, here's me getting served a Kia Royale in the bar. This stock here is a dressing room with uh, champagne, but the trick is, this is like a bomb. If I pour this too fast, this, <laughs> this literally, I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, not on Emirates, because we are the best at what we do, yeah? And so modest. Anyway, with a Kia Royale inside me, and having woken up a bit, we were soon descending into the sort of weather Manchester is famous for. With weather like this, it's no wonder all of the Smiths songs are miserable. And so that's it. And what did it cost me? Well, the base fare that I paid was £872, going out in business and returning from Dubai in economy. The upgrade price for this Dubai to Manchester leg was £344, which was definitely worth it, I think, to test out the product. Bear in mind though, you won't get, among other things, lounge access. In fact, I got an offer via email to get into the Emirates Lounge for a whopping £116, which I didn't bother with. Overall, Emirates Business Class was a pretty solid experience. I'll admit I did enjoy my first class trip quite a lot more than this business class one, but that's the point, right? Anyway, don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.